Good afternoon. Uh, my name is Dr. David Nuttall. I want to um, speak about the first law of thermodynamics uh, for help with um, A-level students. Um, as you can see, the first law of thermodynamics is very important. It's used in steam engines and um, to find the efficiency and also motor vehicles, internal combustion engines and so forth. Um, so the first law of, th of thermodynamics states that the total energy in an isolated system is constant, although the energy can change from one form to another. So you see in the diagram, the system is an isolated uh, area covered by the uh, surroundings uh, with a wall. Um, so system plus surroundings is equal to universe. Um, so the first law of th thermodynamics states the increase in t internal energy delta U is equal to the energy gained by heating delta Q shown by the fire underneath there, uh, minus the work done by the system which is the weight being lifted up by the wheel on that occasion there. So, um, very important in all these heat engines and pumps and so forth is work done by expanding gas. So in the diagram shown, piston of area A moves a distance delta x uh, to either compress or expand a gas. In this case it's gas expansion, so the gas is doing work. So a gas at constant pressure P is contained in a container cylinder with a movable piston of cross-section area A. So the force on the piston equals P A. If the gas expands, then the piston moves only by a small distance delta X, and the work done W delta W by the gas is given by delta W is force times distance, which is pressure times area times distance, which is P A delta X. Since area times distance is A delta X, increase in volume is delta V. So the work done by the gas delta W is P delta V, which is pressure times change in volume. So there's various relationships um, regarding pressure volume diagrams. So first of all, constant volume. For constant volume or isometric, isovolumetric process, V is constant. Delta, therefore delta W is naught since delta V is naught, and then delta Q is delta W. Next one is constant pressure or the isobaric process. The work done on the gas W is P delta V, as we saw before. This is a constant pressure times change in volume. And the arrow goes at level P1 across the diagram, as you can see, from V1 to V2. Um, in an isothermal process, this is Boyle's law behaviour. Um, temperature is constant, and P, the product of PV is constant. Um, so on this occasion, a constant temperature delta U is naught. Um, isothermal processes are reversible, so changes are carried out infinitely slowly, allowing plenty of time for the heat transfer between one, the system and the environment. Next is adiabatic process, is in which heat neither enters nor leaves the system, either by insulating it from environment or performing process so quickly that heat exchange is minimised. Uh, in, in this case, delta Q is naught, of course. Notice that the change in slope between isothermal and adiabatic in isothermal processes PV is constant, and in adiabatic processes PV to the gamma is constant, where gamma is, is characteristic of the gas. Um, so now looking at this more uh, in detail, the work done from PV diagrams, uh, the work done can be found from the pressure versus volume graph when the work is done. So in the first diagram on the left, gas has pressure, volume and temperature represented by the point A and the work done expands to a new pressure, volume and temperature represented by point B. For a very small volume change from V from X to Y, a small amount of work is done W equals pressure times volume change. So we can write W is P delta V equals area of shaded strip below XY. So from A to B, we can say the total work done equals area below AB, uh, or ABLM. So work done equals area between PV graph and volume axis. In the centre diagram, figure 2, the gas expands from P to Q, then it is compressed from Q to R, while the pressure is kept constant, QR is horizontal line, and finally the gas is compressed to P, while its volume is kept constant, RP is vertical line. Now, from P to Q, the work done by the gas is the area PQST. From Q to R, the work done on the gas is the area QRTS. No work is done along 
PR, volume constant. So by subtracting the work done from the two shaded areas, net work done by gas is area enclosed PQR. In the third diagram on the right shows a gas taken around a so-called cycle of changes ABCD from A and back to A. As previously, net work equals uh, work done by gas equals area ABCD. So why is this useful? Well, uh, the Carnot cycle developed by the French scientist Sadi Carnot um, is shown on the right hand diagram. It consists of um, an isothermal expansion from A to B, followed by an adiabatic expansion from B to C, then returning a compression cycle C to D is isothermal and finally an adiabatic compression from D to A. And this represents uh, the work done on a substance in a heat engine. So a heat engine is defined as a device that takes energy from a hot source and uses it to do work. Steam engines, motor car engines and thermal power stations producing steam to drive turbines make use of heat engines. So in the left hand diagram heat flows down from uh, the hot source at, at uh, the top one down to the sink at the bottom. Um, Q1 goes down there, Q2 goes down to sink and then useful work output is done W pointing out to the right there. Um, so to find the efficiency of a, of a heat engine we use the Carnot cycle. Um, heat taken in is Q1 from a hot source um, at temperature TH and does useful work W and it gives out heat Q2 to the surroundings, uh, the sink at low temperature TC. So Q1 is Q plus Q2. The efficiency is given by useful work done by engine W over heat supplied by source Q. And then it transpires that the maximum theoretical efficiency is given by uh, TH minus TC over TH, where all temperatures are expressed in Kelvin degrees C plus 273. So um, obviously the larger the temperature difference the more efficiency the heat engine. Um, the heat pump um, also used as refrigerators or freezers uh, is a heat pump uh, working backwards. In the heat pump heat is transferred from a cold body or sink at TC to a hotter body or source at TH. In this case a motor does the work by driving a reversible heat engine backwards taking in heat from the sink and pumping it to the source. Um, so uh, these are used to heat buildings. They might use um, a cold source like the river and the hot source will be the hall or room that they're heating. Disadvantages of these is that they have to be custom made and you often get large areas of ice around the um, cold sink of course. So let's have a look at some uh, problems. The first law of thermodynamics can be written delta U is delta Q plus delta W. Um, they want the significance of each term when the equation is applied to electrical heating element when the element is still warming up and at constant temperature a short time later. So if you, if you wanted to stop the slide now you could have a go and try and solve the problem uh, which will follow in a few seconds. Solution to problem 1. Delta U is the increase in internal energy which is the portion of energy supplied to the system while it which is retained, i.e. in this case positive. Delta Q is the energy supplied thermally to the element, in this case zero. And delta W is the work done on electrons as energy supplied equals ITV. Now during the initial period, delta U is minus delta Q, so all the energy supplied goes into increasing the internal energy of the system. In the second part, when it's uh, running at constant temperature, uh, delta U is zero and then delta W is minus delta Q which is heat lost by radiation. The third problem, second problem coming up now is when ice else melts at 0 degrees C to form water at the same temperature which of the following options is correct. Again you can have a few seconds to look at this and have a go and then the answer will follow in a few seconds. The solution to this problem too, when ice changes to water it absorbs latent heat effusion, so obviously heat is supplied to the system, that's delta Q. 
Ice has a smaller density than water, meaning that when ice melts the volume decreases so work is done on the system. And when ice melts the water molecules possess both potential and kinetic energies, hence the internal energy of the system must increase. So the correct solution is key A. The third problem, which of the following statements regarding the internal energy of a gas is correct? Options are shown there. Again, if you want a, a few minutes to look at that, you can have a look at that and then pause the film and then you'll see the answer coming up in a few seconds. A is incorrect since there is no interaction between molecules from an ideal gas. The gas has no potential energy, so B is correct. During a free expansion, no work is done by the gas. If the expansion is done quickly, no heat is exchanged and as such D is incorrect. The last and final problem is, is problem 4 which is a PV diagram as discussed previously. An ideal gas is taken through a series of changes shown in the diagram. Which of the following statements is are correct? There's three options given there. Uh, one of them is correct only, I'll tell you that now. So if you want to have a few seconds to look at that, a minute or two, you can freeze the video and then the problem will now come up in a few seconds. Solution to problem 4. Key A is incorrect since network is done by a gas on taking it through a cycle, as we discussed previously. Key B is also incorrect since the volume change in CD is three times that involved in AB. However, key C is correct since the PV product is constant for isothermal processes and works out at um, 40,000 joules at B and also the same at C. Thank you for um, watching this video and for extra information please visit www.alevelphysics.co.uk Thank you very much.